Here's an equation that looks deceptively simple. The square root of x plus 1 plus the square root of x minus 1 equals 1. Square roots often hide interesting twists, and this one is no exception. We're not just going to solve it, we're going to uncover a beautiful contradiction lurking within. And if you stick around to the end, I'll show you two elegant bonus proofs that reveal this impossibility in completely different ways. Before we start manipulating this equation, we need to figure out what values of x actually make sense. When are these square root expressions defined in the real numbers? This is what we call the domain. For the first square root term, what's under the radical x plus 1 needs to be non-negative, so x plus 1 must be greater than or equal to 0, which means x is greater than or equal to negative 1. For the second square root, x minus 1 also needs to be non-negative. This gives us x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, so x must be at least 1. For both square roots to be real at the same time, x needs to satisfy both conditions. The intersection of x greater than or equal to negative 1 and x greater than or equal to 1 is just the more restrictive one. So our domain is all real numbers x greater than or equal to 1. This will be important to keep in mind. Sometimes a picture is worth a thousand algebraic manipulations. Let's plot both sides of our equation and see if they ever meet. I'll set up a coordinate plane here. The blue curve represents the left side of our equation. Square root of x plus 1 plus square root of x minus 1. Notice it's only defined for x greater than or equal to 1. The green line is simply the constant one. The minimum value of our blue curve happens right at x equals 1. Let's see. Square root of 2 plus 0, which is just square root of 2, about 1.414. Here's the key insight. Since the minimum value is already greater than 1, the blue curve never dips down to meet the green line. They never intersect, which suggests there's no real solution. But let's prove this algebraically to be sure. Now, let's work through this algebraically and see where it leads us. A classic move when dealing with multiple radicals. Isolate one of them. I'll move square root of x minus 1 to the right side. Now, we square both sides to eliminate that square root we isolated. But hold on, squaring both sides is a dangerous move, it's not reversible, and it can introduce fake solutions that don't actually work in the original equation. Whatever we find, we'll need to check it at the end. On the left, squaring cancels out the square root. On the right, we need to expand this binomial, 1 minus square root of x minus 1, all squared. After some algebra, we get square root of x minus 1 equals negative 1 half. But wait! This is impossible. A principal square root is always non-negative. Still, let's see what happens if we ignore this red flag and keep going. This is a perfect example of how extraneous solutions sneak in. Let's ignore the obvious contradiction and square both sides again just to see where this rabbit hole leads. Squaring both sides gives us x minus 1 equals 1 fourth. So we get x equals 5 fourths. The algebra has spoken, but is this actually a solution? Time for the moment of truth. Remember, any solution we found after squaring needs to be checked in the original equation. Let's plug x equals 5 fourths back into where we started. This becomes square root of 5 fourths plus 1 plus square root of 5 fourths minus 1. Let's see what this evaluates to. Working out what's under each radical, we get square root of 9 fourths plus square root of 1 fourth. Square root of 9 fourths is 3 halves, and square root of 1 fourth is 1 half. 3 halves plus 1 half equals 2, which is definitely not 1. Our candidate solution is a fraud. So our algebraic journey gave us exactly one candidate, and it completely failed when we tested it. The verdict is clear. There's no real number x that satisfies our original equation. Now, this whole analysis has been in the realm of real numbers. In the complex plane, things get more interesting since square roots become multi-valued, but that's a story for another day.
If you know some calculus, there's actually a much more elegant way to see why this equation has no solutions. Let's call the left side of our equation a function, f of x. Taking the derivative, we get 1 over 2 square root of x plus 1 plus 1 over 2 square root of x minus 1. This is only defined for x strictly greater than 1. For any x greater than 1, both of these terms are clearly positive, so the derivative is always positive. Since our function is continuous at x equals 1 and strictly increasing everywhere else in its domain, the minimum value has to occur right at the left endpoint. At x equals 1, we get square root of 2 plus square root of 0, which is just square root of 2, about 1.414. Since this minimum value is already bigger than 1, and the function only goes up from there, it can never equal 1. Case closed. Here's one more algebraic trick that leads to the same conclusion, but by a different path. This time, instead of isolating one radical first, let's square both sides of the original equation directly. When we expand the left side, we get x plus 1 plus x minus 1 plus 2 times the square root of the product, which simplifies to 2x plus 2 square root of x squared minus 1. Rearranging to isolate the radical term, and here's where we run into trouble. The left side, 2 times the square root, must be non-negative. But look at the right side, 1 minus 2x. For any x in our domain, this is negative or 0. At x equals 1, we get 0 on the left and negative 1 on the right. As x gets bigger, the right side becomes even more negative. There's simply no way for these two sides to be equal. Thanks for sticking with me through this exploration of a deceptively tricky equation. If you enjoyed seeing how a simple-looking problem can hide beautiful contradictions, consider giving this video a like and subscribing for more mathematical adventures.